Well, hey everybody, welcome aboard Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. It's been a little while since we've been down here, or at least you have. Um, in today's episode, we're gonna go ahead and show something kind of interesting. Um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago now, we had to move the boat so we could dredge right here where it's sitting at our at our berth. And um, I went to turn the wheel and the rudder wasn't turning. Oh no, what's going on? Turned the autopilot on and the autopilot was turning it just fine. So assume there was a problem just with the hydraulic steering and check the reservoir and it was really low. So came down below and, um, and I noticed a couple of things that I'll show you on these hydraulic lines. First of all, I do have a slight drip on one of the actual hydraulic rams, so we'll have to rebuild that at some point for sure. But what did concern me was um, the hydraulic lines, two of them are bulging, like they're about to burst. And this is high pressure lines, I don't want to chance that and certainly don't want to have a problem underway. Uh, we were able to just fill up the reservoir with, uh, with hydraulic fluid, bleed it, and we were able to move the boat, you know, shorter distance, just get it done. But now we got to go ahead and do this repair. So the plan today is I'm going to show you kind of what the steering quadrant and everything looks like. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, two lines that need to be rebuilt off. Not very much different than what those fuel lines looked like in the motor during the trip from Louisiana to Florida. Uh, these happen to be a similar fitting. So I'm just going to try to find a hydraulic shop close by. Let's hop back under the master bunk, which I've already pulled the mattress off and, and lifted the panels out so you can see it. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so as we go back into the owner's stateroom, you can see I have the back bunk all pulled up here so we can get a good view of this. But here's kind of what we're looking at. Um, let me orient everybody here. So right here we have the steering quadrant, as you see. And what's interesting is there's actually two hydraulic rams, one on either side, that steer it port to starboard. You can see there the rudder position indicator on that small shelf. Now what you notice is a whole series of hydraulic lines, and that's because there is a manual hydraulic steering pump at the helm itself. And then, I'll give a little bowl down here, I have to catch it. Then there is the uh, part of the auto helm down there, and this is the electric pump for the Raytheon Autopilot. And if you look right here, you can see this issue. Look at that line bulging right there. So we definitely need to get these lines off of here. That should not be bulged out like that. I have the same problem right down there. Look at that. So this thing could actually have a full quart or quart and a half of hydraulic fluid in it. The actual hydraulic reservoir for the manual hydraulic pump sits right behind the actual um, center post of the steering pedestal. So that's where all of it is. Gravity says it's above us, it's going to flow downward. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to crack these hydraulic lines at the bottom first. I'm just going to take one of them off and I'm going to lay the hose down inside of that uh, bowl. The idea is to catch as much of that fluid that comes out as we can. I actually don't know how much of it's going to flow out. I don't know if it all will or if it's going to just sort of stay stationary and let a little bit of air in but not a terribly large amount of uh, fluid out. So I don't really know what to expect. I've never done this before. As I mentioned before, I have several um, sort of build sheets or you know, you know, fuel spill sheets. Uh, I'm going to put that down in the bilge. I want to be sure that if any drops go down to the bottom there or they miss that pan, that none of it gets down into the bilge um, or it mixes with any water and pumps overboard. So let's go ahead and get that started and we'll uh, crack these loose and see what it looks like. All right, let's try and get oriented. So right here is the pump. I have my little bowl right here to catch any fluid and I'm going to try to undo this line right here. So I'm going to take these off completely. I'm thinking I can just pop that right in the bowl. So let's start with just seeing if we can go ahead and crack this loose. What I don't know is if fluid is going to go all over the place here. So I'm going to put these right down here just in case. Let's loose here. Go as quickly as I can. Fluid is running out for sure. Not too much more is coming out, so we're gonna go ahead and try to do the other one. And here I'm just gonna clean around the bottom of this, making sure I don't get any dirt down in the top of that fitting. What I don't know is if any fluid's gonna come out of this, so I'm gonna leave this alone. 
Just let these drip for a few minutes. All right, so this has been draining for probably 15 minutes or so. I'm not seeing any more come out of them. So now I'm gonna get and disconnect the tops of the hoses so I can pull these guys out of here. I'm turn on a little work light for myself. My wrench and away we go. Long threads on this side and a tight spot, which, you know, it's a boat, so of course that's the case. These things have got to go an inch into the tube. Yeah, I didn't want to force this other part, but I will say this should stay if stayed in there. I should have loosened up the other part. I'll show you in a second. But I mean, I'll leave one of these apart so I can show you. Okay, I've got this pulled out. I'll show you what these look like in just a second. Let me get this other one off of here. All right, we got the parts out. Let me kind of show you what I mean about the way I took this apart. Uh, all right, so you can see the two different lines here and you can see that bulge I was talking about right there. Like that's not good. It actually still feels like it's full of fluid. But, um, so this is the section that was on the bottom and this is the section that was on the top. This one has a bulge up here. Now what was interesting is when I took these off on the bottom, I was able to just unscrew this part, no problem. When I came over here to do the top side, I wasn't able to unscrew this and I was afraid it was going to bend the connection where it came off of the, the fitting right here. So I started turning this part and here's what ultimately ended up happening. This thing came out of there. I think I, I basically took apart the hydraulic line that's supposed to stay there because this part's supposed to rotate. Well, that's all right. I'll just screw these back on there tight. And when I go have new lines made, I'll make sure they make them with the fittings like this on the top. I believe these are the same size on the top and the bottom. But it is amazing, when you look at that, that thing goes all the way through that, uh, yeah, darn near all the way through that coupling. It's pretty surprising. And we'll just wrap these up. Nice little uh, hydraulic line burrito right here. With the lights off down here, it's time to pack up, head on into town, see what I can find for a hydraulic shop, refill my coffee. I do have to say, I'm glad to be sharing some videos again of us down on the boat. It's been a little while. Um, you know, seriously, the boat was in Louisiana while we were here from end of March to New Jersey to take care of my dad a year and a half ago. So um, almost two full years at this point. I mean, we're, we're just a few months away from that is how long it's been since we've been sort of on the boat for some period of time. We would go back and, you know, check on it, do some work on it, maintenance, that kind of thing uh, back to Louisiana. but. It sat for a long time, so there is something rather glorious about, uh, I don't know, being back on board and checking everything out, and I wish everything worked. Most of it does. Still ready to be used, which is awesome. <laughs> a lot of work to do, though. Two years sitting in the Louisiana Bayou, which is where it was. Great little hurricane hole, no damage with all those named storms in 2019 and 2020 that went right through southern Louisiana. Shockingly no damage whatsoever from that. A lot of wear and tear, but sitting out there in the bayou and all that humidity, uh, you know, everything varnish needs to be redone, which is a shame because if you guys have been watching this channel, when we had it in the yard, I stripped every bit of teak on deck down to bare teak and I re-varnished all of it and then didn't do the maintenance coat. So it's a matter of starting all over, which is honestly, that's depressing as shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of work, but it looks so amazing when it's done up top. <laughs> so amazing. Time to hop in there and go get these parts. So the great news is, uh, yeah, Hydraulic Shop was able to make these right there while I waited. Um, so let's go hop down below and we'll put both of these on. So taking a closer look at these, you can definitely see that bulge I was talking about. And uh, yeah, I brought them up to a shop. It was kind of amazing, the shop where I brought them. The guy says, uh, yeah, I, I don't have those fittings, but there's another shop just down the way. They do. And these are a little longer, so it'll be interesting to see if I can just bend these a little bit the way I need to. But yeah, nice fittings. When I was there, he did tell me, though, that these fittings are actually reusable. And he said they're fairly expensive, these brass fittings. So he told me how to take these apart and suggested that I do and I keep them so that if I ever want to um, create a couple of spares, it'd be really cheap to just buy the hose and have somebody crimp them on. But he said these are probably $30 to $50 for those crimps. So, yeah, two new hoses uh, cost me 60 bucks, and they were done in 20 minutes. Let's go put them on. All right, so we're back down here at the quadrant, and I'm just going to loosely put these on by hand, but I'm not going to tighten them up all the way because I'm going to have to bleed this. And going to be interesting to do. I think I'm going to start at the highest point to bleed them 
instead of the lowest. My thought is air rising, though once the system's closed, I don't know how true that is, so we'll see. And I'm just putting this on finger tight to start. And I'm just starting here finger tight. And it's going to go right here, but I'm going to hold off and put the other one on first. I'll go ahead and tighten it up. Hey, 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 right over here. Hey, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Give the video a like and a thumbs up. Thanks a bunch, man. Appreciate it. And just like that, they're on. Let me show you what it looks like. So now with the lines on, it was just a matter of bleeding the actual um, air out of the system. And I was kind of thinking that it might be a little bit like doing car brakes. You know, you had somebody pump on the brakes and hold the pedal down and then you crack them the lines to force out any air. So that's kind of what I was thinking would need to happen here. And what's interesting is that wasn't it at all, um, whether this is the way it's designed to work or not. Let me show you what ended up happening. Basically, all I had to do was continue to turn the wheel back and forth in both directions. And I think just because the reservoir is at the very top of the pump and it's a manual, um, it's a manual pump. It's literally right at the back of the steering helm and I'll show you that the air bubbles would kind of work their way into the actual um, reservoir right there at the back of the hydraulic pump. So it was really kind of an interesting way to do it. It took a while. I had, I had to rotate it back and forth, geez, I don't know, 12 to 15 times. But at that stage, I think all the air was out of it and it just feels wonderfully smooth. So let me show you what the actual hydraulic uh, pump, the manual pump looks like and the reservoir. So here's our helm here and literally right at the very back of this particular um, shaft right there from the center of the wheel, it goes into the helm, and that's the hydraulic steering itself. Let me show you. So here you go, you can see it. Um, you can see the shaft here, and it comes right into the center of this. And all we have to do is loosen up this nut. I love that I keep a wrench right in the helm station all the time. And this is the actual reservoir. It's hard to see it in there, but we're filled up with fluid. Um, and it was really pretty easy to do, just a matter of turning the wheel back and forth. I'll show you kind of how simple this turns. And then yes, I did tie the dock lines on, turn the power on and make sure that my rudder was thrusting both back and forth in both directions. See how well I can do this one handed here. So um, I have the wheel here and all I need to do is just take my finger and I can rotate it around just like this. It's about six full rotations from quadrant post to quadrant post. And again, just one finger. It's really easy to do. I get full steering. So I love that the wheel turns that easily. It really is handy to have it uh, just be that simple. And what's cool about this particular helm is there's a small knob back here where you can adjust that and it determines how many rotations it takes to, uh, to turn the rudder all the way over. So I don't know, it's almost like maybe it's a valve that controls how much fluid each bit of rotation pushes through the hydraulic line. That's kind of a neat little thing. Yeah. So. All in all, hydraulic lines bled, hydraulic uh, hoses replaced, and we have good working and functioning steering again. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. We'll see you again next Friday, back aboard Dream Chaser right here. Bye y'all. Safe sailing. Hope you have a beautiful winds.